it's about to go live on YouTube. I'm gonna pop out the chat on YouTube. Waiting for all of that to load. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not using the music that gets the copyright filter mad at us today. It's just me singing poorly for a while. Anyway, now one thing we need is, um, I believe Tommy Boy is going to be modding for us today. So I need to make sure that Tommy actually stops in. Um... And gets modded. Okay, welcome everybody. Okay, we are just setting up now. We are going to be doing more badly drawn hermits with a Viva Kitty. If Hi. you, how do you Viva? <laughs> um, I was going to say, you know what? I need to pull up is I need to pull up that Twitch thread, or not Twitch thread, Twitter thread from last time, so I can keep appending all my tweets so probably the best way to do that is go to search.twitter.com and search for joe hills and then who do we draw that people talk about with me the least probably zadaf so if i search for joe hills cleo there's going to be like eight pages of stuff um ah here it is here's the thread so, for anybody looking for the uh, the pictures from last time, or drawings from last time, I'm going to post those while we get set up. We're giving everybody a little bit of time to wander in. Okay. There we go. That looks like Tommy is here. So, we're going to go ahead and add moderator. And uh, Tommy is here on there as well. Your um, two avatars are very different, Tommy, which is fine, objectively, but is one of those things where when I'm like looking for one, the same thing in both chats, I got to look for the name. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Looks like we are good there. No, you don't need to apologize. I'm just... Also, if you said, no, they're not, then that would immediately warn me that I had accidentally modded the wrong Tommy boy in one of the chats. Hence, hence why I said it, just to make sure, because it is, it's fine as long as I'm modding the right person. But yeah, so I'm down here, uh, not in slot seven today, although I guess I could be. We can move that. That's, that's an option we have. This is about where slot seven goes. Um, I was going to say, Aviva could put a green rectangle there for the setup screen, at least. Because that, that, that's the power you have in the Photoshop, right? Yay, I'm a little low. There you go. Yay, thank you, Aviva. <laughs> so, y'all, we are still getting set up, giving folks a chance to come in, and then we will do our real intro shortly. Normally, I'd play music, but I don't want this one to get copyright struck because um, I want people to be able to go back and watch the VOD without having to, to worry about anything. Um, okay. Are we in, like, Zoom or something? Like something? Okay, it's so weird streaming without a game open. I've got... But what I do have is I have my notepad with, like, a uh, picture of false symmetry in it. And uh, because, it, like I said, if you saw that previous Twitter thread, um, we are going to be continuing that today. Uh, Aviva, we have, like, what, seven or eight hermits left? Uh, I think nine. Nine. Okay, great. So let's see. We are at 12.01. There's probably been enough. To, oh, I need to put up. I'm like, I feel like there's something I haven't set up yet. And the thing I haven't set up yet is special, cat, special guest Aviva Kitty of Badly Drawn Hermits. That I need to have. There we go. And da -da -da -da. I might crop that a little bit more just while we're. Cleaning things up here. Okay, there we go. Ooh. That wasn't better. Dang it, cropping. <laughs> That's the problem with the relative versus the absolute crop. Okay, relative crop is completely broken. Um, 
Why is that not going? There it is. Okay, it's moving it over that way as I go. That's fine. Okay, we figured it out. We figured it out. Okay. So we are going to be doing some live drawing of the hermits today with a Viva Kitty of Badly Drawn Hermits. If you have not seen Badly Drawn Hermits before, I'm going to post that in both chats as well. Boom. There we go. So that is a thing that you now have. Um... And in the meantime, I'm realizing for lighting purposes, and since I don't have a game up, I should probably put something in this window so my desktop background doesn't color half my face tinted blue. That is not a boon or a balloon for ever, anybody. Um, so, there we go. So, we have I posted the thread of the previously drawn stuff. We have given folks time to enter... I think that we are basically good to go. Aviva, do you have anything else you need to set up on your... I forgot to post the tweet with the link. Brr. Okay. I don't... You can keep talking. That wasn't a buzzer like, stop talking, you lose a game show. That was just me being disappointed in myself vocally. Yes. Hi, people in chat. I see lots of names that I recognize and also ones that I don't. And I don't want to read out ones that I recognize, and not ones that I don't, and make people feel like I'm prioritizing others over- Ah! Words! <laughs> yeah, hi. I have an actual microphone now, and I have a weird, uh, makeshift pop filter I made myself. <laughs> oh, I started off with a makeshift pop filter, too. Uh, it was like a pantyhose over uh, a wire coat hanger that I had bent into shape. That's that's really all you need. Yeah, mine is uh, pipe cleaners and scrap fabric from my mom making masks. <laughs> oh, very fancy. Yeah, it's taped together. Eventually, I think I want to properly sew it together. <laughs> okay, I'm realizing what I should do is actually append this to the bottom of the thread. So, assuming I can... So, I think... Was Zadaf the last one we did? Uh, no, the last one we did was false, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're right, you're right, okay. Dokiam. Actually, I have the last one as a little overlay here to check that I'm doing the sizes right to make sure so when we do these ones, the sizes will be about the same. So yeah, this is... Let me tur I can turn up the opacity. These are the ones we did last time. Awesome. I'm realizing that the, the way Twitter th does threads now is just, like, stupid on their normal website. Usually I would be in TweetDeck. And mm -hmm. so I've got a tweet where I'm like, next up is false, and then I can't see the replies to it. Why is this so silly? Did I... I, I must have posted the false one. Did I not post it in the same thread? Hmm. There it is. Oh, okay. This is just absolutely terrible how they do this. Okay, so I figured it out. I found the... Here's the, here's the false symmetry one. And then I can add a reply to it somehow? Here it is. Here it is. Okay. We are live now with a Viva Kitty of Badly Drawn Hermits to continue our drawing of all the hermits. Twitch.tv slash Joe Hills. Do, 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 do. Come draw along. So, yeah, if you weren't here at the last stream, I have this very... I made this, like, really sort of convoluted way of choosing which hermit to draw. But now we have, like... I have these three, like, fortune teller things but half the hermits on all of them are done. So I think half the time we're going to get ones we've already done, and then I'm just going to like count around clockwise to whichever one is is next. So That seems fine with me. So you know what? Let's go ahead and get started. Y'all, I've already kind of given half of the intro poorly <laughs> while we were setting up, but I think we're actually finally set up now. So um, here we go. 
Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I am joined by a special guest, Aviva Kitty of Badly Drawn Hermits. Woo! I'm moving your title left and right, so it looks like it's very excited. Um, but, yes, thank you so much for joining us again, Aviva. Last time you were here, we drew uh, over a dozen of the hermits, uh, a good number of them, and I'm looking forward to doing that again. Um do you uh, want to say anything uh, to introduce yourself? Or... Yeah. Hi. Howdy. I'm Aviva. I like doing fan art of Minecraft stuff. <laughs> Yay. Um, so if you don't have a pen and paper, we gave you like five to eight minutes to go get one. And so that's on you at this point. I probably should have told you to go get one five to eight minutes ago. Didn't. That part's on me. But, um, you know, that's fine. Um, so there's not going to be a Minecraft... Thing today we're, we're streaming uh aviva's photoshop i'm also going to be posting my drawings along on twitter and i'll be posting the links in the chat if you want to see my progress um we do have the abacus here today uh i am paying aviva to be here aviva gets paid either way but uh i appreciate it if people do throw some tips my way uh to help me keep doing events like this um but yeah we're going to do the standard 20 dollar face camera expansion milestones um, okay, so I think we are basically ready to go. That covers everything. How do we get started picking our first hermit, Aviva? Uh, so I guess I'm just gonna pick the one of these that's on top, mm -hmm. and you can go through the basic things. So, yeah, we have the colors, so I guess pick a color. Sure, um, blue. B-L-U-E. And then, normally in these, you're supposed to, like, choose a, a number, but I have a dice. I have... I have a D4. <laughs> yeah, we'll let that choose. That's yes. easier. And one. So then one. And then two. So number two on this is Scar, which we've already done. So next to him is Stress. So we'll do Stress first. Yay! <laughs> and let me put this at the bottom of the pile. <laughs> These are kind of a mess. No worries. Nothing I do is, is organized at all. Yeah, so I have the ones from last stream overlaid underneath so you can get, like, the size right mm -hmm. for, like, starting out. So we started with B-dubs last time, and Scrubby Zoom isn't on. I keep forgetting that. Um, so, yeah, start with B-dubs, who's someone who I always draw short. Stress is the other person who I have, like, I have, like, short. It's... Stress, B-dubs, and Brian, I think, are the ones I always draw short. Mm -hmm. Like, So what other things about stress are distinctive? Uh, For her, it's, it's the outfit and the hair. Mm -hmm. Like, often with a lot of them, it's the outfit and the hair. Like, her, and then... So you start with kind of a squatter rectangle for her face, I guess, because the hair is going to occupy a lot. Yeah, like I'm going to end up erasing the top anyways, so mm -hmm. I was not really measuring that out properly. Gotcha. Oh, my smoothing is on really high. I think I was doing something else earlier. Oh, no worries. <laughs> there we go. And then... Some shoulders here. So I noticed in this case, the um, the box that makes up the body doesn't go all the way to the shoulders. Is that just slightly looser style, or is that something about stress in particular? I don't know. Like often, I have the like the shoulders just go out a bit. Like for me, like with the shoulders, it especially when I'm just scribbling and doodling, mm -hmm. I'm not thinking too much about that. Gotcha. go and then all right let me turn that off now oh that one let me turn that off now that we have like the basic size mm -hmm. let's see turn this turn my racer up so it's bigger here so the stress first i want to start with the eyes to get the placement of that right but yeah for stress her hair like covers 
mm -hmm. part of one eye, okay. of the right eye. Wait, her right eye, I guess that because it's on the left side. Mm -hmm. It's her right eye. Okay. I always, like, when I'm talking about, like, if it's on the right or left side of the character, I always speak as in their right or their left. Ah, that's a good note. Okay. So, yeah, and then she just has, like, this is a, like, poofy sort of curl. Like, not... Curls just like that. And mm -hmm. I always have to, like, drawing that before I do the peoples. I don't know why. It ends up looking a bit creepy when I don't have them in, but... Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm just gonna have the eye in there still, because you know what? It makes it easier for expression. And when you're doing this cartoon style, you can have the eyes overlapping the hair. It doesn't matter too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Check. Out. All right, I didn't have. Sometimes I add details to the ears in some drawings, and sometimes I didn't. So I was checking because I want to like keep this semi consistent with uh, the last one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for stress. She, this season, has the flower crown, which I do her flower crown different than Cleo's. Hers uh -huh. is actually more of actually on her head instead of, like, floating. Is... Just, like, flowers in her hair, basically. Mm -hmm. And a few little lines to connect that. And we have her jacket, which is pretty simple. I always thought it was a hoodie, and then it, everyone was, like, drawing it as a cardigan. And I was like, I'm not sure, but I guess it doesn't have, like, a hood, so. Mm hmm Okay. We have that, and it has little folded over sleeves and extra lines there. So, like, two lines for the jacket. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then she also has band on her leg mm -hmm. with a flower on it. Is that something in the skin, actually? Yeah. Interesting. I have no idea what it actually is supposed to be. <laughs> but it's clearly just a band with a flower on it. Ooh. Yeah, maybe my skin isn't mysterious enough. What I need to do, you know, people keep saying, Joe, you eventually need to change away from the Steve skin. And people have made some kind of literal interpretations of my appearance. And they're like, you should just make it look like you in real life. And I'm like, no, th this, this is what I need. I need a bunch of random stuff where somebody goes, what is that? Is that a pocket? Or is that one of the characters from Redwall? Or is that an ancient Egyptian glyph? Like, there's a lot of, like, it just, the whole thing needs to be so abstract that it's it's impossible to, um... I, I love skins like that, honestly, because it gives so much room for interpretation. Like, I think last stream I showed, like, something I was drawing with, like, drawing a character as, like, sort of like a melty lava lamp character. Like, when you have so much interpret room for interpretation, it leads to so much fun things. Oh, absolutely. And that, and that's what, you know, when, when we're making stuff in our videos, we're trying to give people the opportunity to, um, you know, take what we do and then extend it or interpret it in, the, in their own game in different ways. Um, Tommy Boy says, what if that at symbol has been a pocket this whole time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just a snake, it turned out, or something silly. Yeah. Um, but okay, I'm realizing that setting up the tweet on the computer, but then having the photo on my phone is a bad way to do this. So um, I'm gonna start posting the next uh, the, that uh, stress monster um, picture that yeah. I just made, so that I can share it with y'all. Uh, Aviva, who is gonna be up next? Just out of curiosity. Well, I still have this dreidel on the desk. Tonica ended a few nights ago, but I still have the dreidel on the desk, so I think I'll use this to determine the next color. Spin it. And then none, which on this dreidel happens to be blue. So B L U E and B four three one two three two. Uh Impulse, already done, but next to him is Hypno, who we haven't done. 
and Hypno, I think, is the one person I'm going to actually have to look up a reference, because I just do not draw him like... I've drawn him, like, twice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he's old school, and, like, you only started watching Hermitcraft a few years ago, right? Yeah, like... Uh... Yeah. He's got, like, a distinctive bandana, or, like, a do-rag type thing. Mm -hmm. Um... But... I'm bringing up name MC. <laughs> okay. See, I've drawn him before. I just need like references for his clothing. Cause... Yeah, this is part of being an artist is looking up references. You know, it used to be back in the day, as an artist, you'd have to go to the library and pull photo references, and you'd have to say to the librarian, I'm sorry, does somebody have uh, the book with all the hermit skins checked out? Um... <laughs> Let's see. Check the height on the other ones as well. Just making sure that the head is relatively same size again. All right. You yeah. Know, Name MC is such a useful resource, and it's so annoying watching Bedrock YouTubers I watch nowadays because I can't use Name MC to look up their skins, and I have to like trudge through their videos to find good screenshots. Oh no. <laughs> What were you going to say? You know, uh, somebody, uh, different people were making suggestions about my skin. Um, like Sour Patch says, uh, maybe if Joe needs a new skin, people can think of ideas based around his trademark characteristics like Nashville, Tennessee, music type things, some sort of a nomad. The thing is, being a nomad is actually more true in season six of Hermitcraft than like my life in general. Like I basically lived in Nashville for half my life now or almost i've lived in tennessee more than half my life by far but um because i came here for college back in 2004 and then stuck around and now we're so that's 16 years later i've been in nashville so i wouldn't describe myself personally as much of a nomad um but like that does bring to mind the fact that like maybe i should think about if i was going to get a new skin for season eight what thematically is likely to come up in season eight you know like if uh the big thing in these in season six was that i was a nomad then yeah nomad skin would have made sense for that but like if season eight like cleo and i do a base together which we've been kicking around maybe i need like a ricky ricardo skin um is that too dated aviva i i know i've heard the name <laughs> okay that's fine it's it's <laughs> Uh, one of the most famous television characters of all time before your time. Um, that was, uh, the name of the husband on I Love Lucy. Okay, yeah, I, I know what that show is. I've never seen it. No but... worries, no worries. <laughs> all right, so, yeah, the eyes. I feel like I should know how to draw Hypno with how much... I have a few friends that just, like, have drawn him constantly, but... Okay, so you, I, you got I the... I guess it's different. Slight curvature on the do-rag there. Okay. Yeah, it's a little... Tied. You can see we're poking out a little bit, I think. And... There, down. And yeah. His clothing is where I had to look up the reference because it's like, oh gosh. So yeah. It's like a cloak. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, see, I, I wouldn't have known cloak. Like, but like, I don't pay enough attention to people's skins, you know? I try not to judge people by what they wear in real life, and so in Minecraft, it's even less important, usually. But I'm not normally arting. Mm -hmm. There's it there, and then there's something like across here. I don't know what it is. I'm just drawing sort of a line and a little dangly thing there. And or like a, a clasp or something here. for the cloak? I think so. And... Like that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. He's got like a he's got like a really fancy belt, which a lot of the hermits don't. Mm-hmm. OK. 
Okay. You're like looking at the skin, and I feel like it feels like the same thing. I think just adding like the details and stuff to his cloak instead of just leaving it mm -hmm. blank is sort of what. There we go. <laughs> feels a bit better. Awesome. Mine is nowhere near as good as yours. Oh, you 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 know part of it is that you have cool hair in here. And I didn't I didn't do good hair. Okay. But yeah, your cloak and everything turned out way better. Okay. So, I'm going to take a picture of mine to post to the Twitter and I guess you can start figuring out who we got next. Mm -hmm. So, Sitting for a long time. So it landed on Shin, it's just orange, so I'm gonna do yellow for this because the one I have, but W E L L O No, why did I say W? It's Y E. Well -L -L maybe maybe you know palindromically speaking. W. Like it could be W O L L E Y. I mean there's a lot of ways you could approach the word. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. And one. Let's see. All right. So Zed, we've already done. So then we'll go to the one next time, which is Azuma. Excellent. Yeah, Azuma was one of the people where people or where, where viewers were like, "How could you do this and not draw Azuma?" It's like, well, we randomized it. We knew we were gonna have time for everybody. I'm so, I mean, uh, yeah. Like, as I mean, I was expecting people to be like. So Brian and Iskal being the ones that <laughs> Okay. I assume it's the ones that didn't the people commented about most too. <laughs> well but that's the thing, is like we only you know, trying to draw twenty plus hermits in two hours is just too much, man. You know, we gotta go a bit at a time. Okay. Let's make sure the head is the right size. Okay, I need to go and then x would be a little taller right. move him over a bit i was gonna say do you make his helmet a little bit bigger than the other people's heads because it's supposed to be a helmet or is it end up being the same size just for consistency um the base of it's the same size but there's parts that like protrude so it ends up looking a bit bigger uh-huh Zuma is someone who I've drawn a lot. I think of of the hermits who aren't who aren't or weren't also mindcrackers, I think Azuma was the first one I ever did fan art of. Because of course all the ones who are or were minecrackers I've done. I did a lot of fan art way earlier. <laughs> Like, oh man, um, a few days ago was the 10th anniversary of Etho's Let's Play World. And I went and, like, realized I had been watching Etho and Etho, Beef, B Dubs, and Doc for eight years. Wow. Which is crazy. That is crazy. Uh, hey, Dr. Phil, thank you for the two who says thanks for being such a great creator and artist. I do what I can. But, uh, you know, maybe he's thanking me for being a creator and he's thanking you for being such a great artist and maybe those words got mashed up there i am present but aviva is the one really arting it up this time oh no i'm getting behind because i'm clicking on things and moving beads but thank you very much dr phil that puts us 18 away from our first face camera expansion of the stream all right so zuma actually do the, this part first and then sort of try and fit the eyes in <laughs> unlike doing the eyes first for most of the others so then he has so it's like a slot mm -hmm. okay. this part which is like lines there yeah i realize i've been on hermitcraft um like because hermitcraft has been around about eight years and i've i'm like 34 so I've been on Hermitcraft almost a quarter of my life at this point, I think, that math works out. 
Like, once Hermitcraft hits nine years, it's going to hit nine years of Hermitcraft before I hit being 36 years old. So, it's going to be a quarter of my life soon. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I mean, for me, I've been watching Minecraft content for almost half my life, which is just wild. Yeah. I see what you mean about this mask being a lot. <laughs> yeah, so it has, like, this thing and then sometimes I draw like X's on these parts. Uh-huh. And round this part out a bit. And add this part there. No, let's do that like that. Oh, and you put hair yeah. inside the helmet? Yeah, just a little bit. You can see just like a little teeny bit of it. Mm -hmm. But I want to make the your part's a bit smaller, I think. Back out too much. There we go. Okay. Yeah. X has a lot of details on his skin. And if if we're being Doom Guy accurate, I am missing a lot as well. Yeah. I do very simplified armor mm -hmm. compared to the and so it has like this. Mm -hmm. And then it goes like that. No, this actually goes... No, it's like this. And this part's like that. And like that. <laughs> then we have this part. I think finally, what's finally gotten me to actually learn how to properly at least try and learn how to properly do armor mm -hmm. is uh getting in getting more into star wars and really getting attached to a couple of the clone troopers <laughs> oh are there differences between the clone troopers oh the armor is basically the same but wanting to be able to draw them mm -hmm. i still need to know how to draw that armor gotcha and there is differences like for the different ranks as well and then go like this. Because we were watching The Mandalorian as a family. Mm -hmm. And I just like explaining so much Clone Wars like in Rebels lore to the rest of my family. Because my parents are people are like the prequels are awful and you should never watch them type people. Because they, cause they grew up with the original movies. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, so, and then I have a little thing here. Oh, like so, yeah, I didn't thing. actually watch the prequels until last winter. And I was like, these aren't actually as bad as I was led to believe. And then I got into the Clone Wars and became attached to it. So we watched The Mandalorian as a family as it came out. And then I'm re-watching The Clone Wars, and my dad is watching it for the first time. So we were watching that together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we are. my daughter and I are caught up on The Mandalorian, but we haven't watched Clone Wars or all of that yet. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly, I'd say Clone Wars is a bit dark. I would probably go with Rebels first. Is it darker than The Mandalorian? Oh, Clone Wars is extremely dark. Okay. But Rebels is definitely more tied to kids. I am baffled that... Clone Wars is marketed as a kid's show. Gotcha. It's definitely geared more towards, like, teenagers. Okay. I'm going to post this Isuma picture to my Twitter. Oh, I've been forgetting to post the tweets to the, um... To the thread. Or, or to, no, I, I mean, I've been posting them to the thread. I haven't been posting them to the chat. So, sorry, chat. Let me try to do better at that this time but my Asuma it didn't turn out as well proportioned I think that's one of the big things that you really get from practice that I haven't had I can follow along with a lot of the detail stuff and get the details in the right place but I'm not getting the proportions right you know something actually he's currently Bzuma so one thing I like to add is little little B antennas oh nice <laughs> Um, who is up next? All right, so I'll go for this next. So, 
B L U E. Oh, out of reach. One, two. Iscal. Iscal. Iscal is. So yeah, Iscal is one who I have him shorter side, but not as short as like the ones I draw the shortest. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular reason for that? Because like in real life, Iskal's pretty tall. It's just I don't know. It's just like vibes. Okay. Like it's sort of like just things people like figure it out as like because like of the architect trio Mumbo has like really Mumbo is obviously really tall and it just like <laughs> yeah well Mumbo is tall in real life too that's like a legit thing mm -hmm. why is this not I'm realizing that I had filtered all of the pictures last time to be more black and white whereas now you're getting the light from the room whatever it's fine Okay. Okay, so we got Iskale's head. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that Darth Jar Jar or Emperor Jar Jar th uh, oh. thing a few years ago. But yeah, that was. I... Oh, go on. I've seen it. It's ridiculous. It's one of my favorite Star Wars fan theories. That's the only thing that makes watching the prequels feasible for me. That's the that was that was the only reason I was able to go back and rewatch the prequels was just to see that. Hey, it looks like we got another tip that just rolled in. Thank you very much to Neom for the five who says woke up at four a.m. to catch the stream. I love our streams and hope they continue. Uh, good job, both of you. Well, thank you very much. That is going to put us uh, 13 away from our first face camera expansion. I'm still down here. Roughly where slot 7 would be. <laughs> um. yeah, my favorite like crazy Star Wars theory is one that's centered around the Clone Wars. Um, but the reason I love it so much is so ridiculous. But people, the thing is, people actually there are people who actually believe this. Um, People who don't watch haven't watched the Clone Wars aren't gonna understand this at all. But the theory okay, is I'm not that, then, but it's okay. Is that, yeah, Corky K Corky Kreez is the secret child of of Satine and Obi Wan, <laughs> which is just like so ridiculous. But it's... okay, yeah, I don't know who any of those characters are except Obi Wan. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. I need to, like, find a group of people who've watched all, like, the Star Wars, like, animated series and yeah. are into that as much as me. Because, like, I find myself every time I'm talking with people, I end up having to, like, explain so many different things. Yeah, like, that happened with me and The Expanse a lot. And is now happening to me with the Brandon Sanderson books. Because the problem is Sanderson has, like, a bunch of interconnected trilogies. And so it's like, okay, well, I've read these eight or nine of his 17 books in this sequence. And nobody has read the exact same ones as me. And so we're all like, wait, have you read this? No, okay. Well, in the, okay. And it's just like, that eyepiece, can you talk a little bit about that for a second? All right, yeah. I sort of like have like a way I've figured it out. It isn't fully logical to how it, actually looks i'm not sure so basically i have a square with a smaller square in it uh -huh. the three pieces prongs that go up to the middle and down and then a larger square it's in and then part of that square like these lines go out like that i see that the the eyebrows <laughs> go underneath here which is normally not something that happens mm -hmm. yeah well yeah, because with the eyebrow, when it's, like, lifted, it, I draw it where, like, there's a part missing from it. Mm-hmm. Because the very, like, edge of these pieces aren't, like, I don't draw, like, fully connected to his face. They're more connected to metal and just, like, poke out for aesthetic. Mm-hmm. 
not the most sensical, I guess, prosthesis. Well, I'd like to point cool. out that the hermits aren't the most sensical anything. So, you know, you're fine. We don't we don't do it for the sense having. Mm -hmm. Then we have beard, which is basic shape. It's pretty simple. And then Iskal, going back to like the spiky hair spectrum, he's low on it, but like he's on it, but not like high on it, but also not extremely low on it either. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that hair is like I looked down for a second, and like you <clears throat> just had this hair done. So, ooh, I'm gonna try and catch up as quick as I can here. But and then with this gal's outfit, thing is, sometimes I draw him as having a backpack, sometimes as having a vest, but he's referred to it as a vest. So I'm gonna draw it as a vest here. Okay. That. And then he's like boots, kind of. Gotcha. And then he also has fingerless gloves. Mm. Oh wow! The, the the lack of detail I did on the fingers is gonna make that pretty bad. Okay. It's funny because we spend the same amount of time on these, but just because your proportions are so much better. Like, it's crazy the difference in coherence between the two. I mean, with me, I'm also, like, in school for doing this. So. No, I know, I know. It's just... <laughs> yeah, like, oh man, I've looked at some of my old art recently, and I noted, like, the time it took me to do it, and I'm like, that really took me, like, three hours? I could do that in, like, 10 minutes now <laughs> yeah okay my my proportions on this iskull are not good but you know what that's fine i'm i'm it's iskall 85 next up we are gonna try to draw well, this the la this the rectangle one, which is the next one in line, only has one person left on it, and that is Grian. Okay, so, well, I guess we're drawing Grian. Put that one aside. Okay. Oh, I need to actually attach the image to the thing. <laughs> Here's my attempt at. Is a drawing is skull 85. Okay. So one thing I really like is people are replying to my tweets with their attempts. So then the hermit who looks at my thing is just like, what, this is terrible. But they before they can get too mad at me, they'll see all the good ones. And then, <laughs> and then it'll be fine. But I did ask all the hermits permission for this. So... Don't worry, we're not just stealing their likenesses for a quick seven dollars. <laughs> I see in chat uh, TR saying, "Doesn't Iskal skin have a secret robotic arm?" Yes, it does, and I wonder if he's aware of that because under the overlay layer on his skin, uh -huh. there's like a robotic arm under it, and I wonder if he did that or if the person who like made his like updated skin did it, and he doesn't know because he's never talked about it, as far as I'm aware. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, if it's a good enough robotic arm, you, you don't have to worry about it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like car maintenance. I don't know if that's... That doesn't actually carry over <laughs> at all. Um, yeah, people are asking about it. If you, you don't see it if you, like, just download it on NameMC, but if you bring it up on, like, Need Cool Shoes and, like, disable the overlay layer, you can see it. And I'm just like, hmm, <laughs> what's the deal with this? Yeah, and funnily enough, this girl was one of the few hermits that in, like, the phase of uh, 
me and friends like we were first like talking to each other about hermitcraft and like coming up with like i sort of like personal designs and such mm -hmm. like the one of the few ones we didn't give any extra robotic stuff because he already had the robotic eye because <laughs> like in the like i guess head cannon territory of like the hermit's personas mm -hmm. like our group gives false a robotic arm gives azuma a robotic arm and leg it's like a ton of different stuff and it's just like because <laughs> yeah if you've looked at some of my art i've drawn like false when I, she has the glove off i have one of the arms being like robotic mm -hmm. i actually don't know where that idea came from because my friend lake was the one that mentioned it the first like mention we can find of like of that of anyone mentioning that but they thought it was already a thing and we have no idea where they came up with that from maybe they just got confused with somebody else yeah yeah i think it's most likely but it's just like funny that it's become like a a thing where i've seen other people unrelated drawing her with a robotic arm and <laughs> it just came from like a misunderstanding yeah uh, Nayla says, I would love to meet a hermit. Well, just so you know, we do go to conventions and stuff. You know, not right now because of the COVID, but uh, next year, I know a lot of folks are excited about getting traveling again. I certainly am. So, Oh, man, yeah. I don't know what part of the word, world you're in, Nayla, um, but, you know, I travel to conventions all over the United States, and I'm hoping to start doing stuff in Europe, too. Um, honestly, that's really going to depend on... Uh, finances more than anything. It's because before I didn't have enough vacation days because of my day job, but now that YouTube is my day job, I, it's more of a question of like, um, how how many trips can I afford to make? Because you got to keep in mind, not only do I have to pay for like travel and hotel, but also like if I'm traveling, I'm not making episodes or streaming as much, and then and that's where the money comes from for the traveling. So, yay, calculus. We get to find the local maxima or whatever that is. Figure out how much I can actually go places. Because, um, honestly, I don't know yet. Uh, Naila says, I'm in South America, so no conventions for me. Um, well, which country? What What is the major convention in... The thing is, I'm sure that there are, like, sci-fi and gaming conventions and stuff in South America. Um, now, I, I can't... Guiana? Okay. Yeah. Uh, da -da. Guiana, largest gaming convention. Uh, someone's asking what software I'm using. I'm using Photoshop. It's Adobe Photoshop. I have it through my college. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh... It's next to Brazil. Okay, so Guiana might not have any major gaming conventions, but just out of curiosity, if I went to Brazil, they would Brazil has a Brazil game show, originally titled the Rio Game Show, is a yearly Brazilian video game convention um, held in Sao Paulo. That's kind of out of the way. Okay, well it's out of the way for me too. I'm just saying. Um. Oh no, you're drawing Grian. Um, what? Tell tell me what you're doing so that that yeah. we can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Grian's pretty simple. He just has like floopy hair. I like to add like details of like the little like ends of his sweater. But uh -huh. Actually, I messed that up. I his sweater isn't exactly like that. He actually has the sleeves rolled up, so I need to fix that. Okay. Um, there we go. It's like like that. Uh, this is this is a going to be a terrible one for me. I'm like, I'm I'm worried that this is not going to read as green at all. Um, so he's got sweatery sleeves. He's got. Uh... Mm -hmm. And one thing I add to make it definitely like sell it as green is something I always draw him. With, I always give him his elytra. Okay. Like it's sort of like iconic to him. Sometimes I draw it like as actual wings, and a lot of times I just draw them as like actual just elytra, which are just basically just squares. Uh huh. For rectangles. That just like stick out. Mm -hmm. Okay. It does actually sell green a lot better now. Mm, there's like fold there. 
Oh, and he's got cuffs skin. on his jeans, it looks like. Is that part of the original mm -hmm. model, or is that just... Yeah, that's part of it. Okay. He's... He also, like, detailed shoes and stuff. It's, uh... <laughs> Level him out there. Grand's a very simple one. But I find people, like, always find ways to, like, add to his design to, like, make it more... Yeah, I'm... This is... I did not do a great job. Okay, <laughs> but that's okay. That's... I'm glad other people are posting their replies to these, so it's not just going to be mine looking terrible on its own. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing uh, Flying Potatoes asking what drawing tablet is. I have, like, an old Wacom Intuos... It's literally, like, taped together, but it, like, I don't, it's, yeah, I think it's Wacom Intuos Bamboo. I'm not sure. I like this one because it has a pen you don't have to charge. You just plug it in, and the pen is, like, works through, I think, like, pressure and magnets and stuff. And then you just plug in the tablet. I know a lot of people prefer, like, to either have, like, wireless tablet and such or have, like, a screen tablet. But those, you have to charge the pen, and I just don't want to have another thing to charge. So, yeah, I use pretty much basic one. Who are you going to be teaching us to draw next? Because I'm trying to include that in each tweet. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Who's... There's only two left on this one, so I think we'll just go for the ones that are on the next one, which is TFC would be next. Okay, cool. Yeah, TFC is definitely the one that I stray the most from his skin and more towards his, like, actual appearance because his, his skin is just <laughs> Steve with a different outfit, basically. Yeah, so well, I, I, I mean, mine too, so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, with, with him, I give him, like, closer to, like, his real hair because it's, like, very identifiable. Okay. It also looks like yeah, this this Brazil game show, the most recently it occurred in October 2019. So, yeah. So it seems to be ongoing. But yeah, like being able to afford to travel to other countries and stuff for conventions is going to partially depend on whether or not they're willing to pay for my trip. And I'm not a big enough draw yet unfortunately for a lot of places to do that mm. yeah. yeah there's so many conventions i want to go to though like i've mostly just like gone to even though i live like in the washington dc area most conventions i've gone to have actually been in like the austin area <laughs> oh yeah i haven't really i haven't actually been to austin texas yet although did yeah, you you did where... say Austin, not Boston, right? Yeah, Austin. Yeah, Austin. I've never... I think I've been to Boston once when I was, like, a baby. But I, I've never been to Boston any time that I remember it. Yeah, yeah Austin is where my, my grandparents live and uh, mm -hmm. where my mom grew up. So, and basically, this is the first year ever that I haven't gone to Austin, like, like, the entire first year of my life that I haven't gone to Texas for, for like, a week. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's uh, difficult here in a lot of ways. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, normally, like, my family thing is, like, every once or twice a year, um, my family and then my aunt, certainly my mom's sister, who live in California, mm -hmm. instead of, like, going all the way across the country, we meet halfway at our grandparents' house. Mm-hmm. Which is nice. So we have like a family gathering once or twice a year. That's cool. And it's just often I've been in town at the same time as conventions. Or it's easier to go to conventions there because I have a place to stay. Mm -hmm. And it's in like conventions I'm interested in. And funny enough, there's a lot of conventions in D.C. that I've been interested in. But I've always had something else going on that week. <laughs> Like, every single time. Yeah, have you gotten down to the Small Press Expo in Bethesda? That's... I've gone once. I went last year. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't know about it until right after it happened in 2019, mm -hmm. even though, like, that hotel is, like, where relatives always stay when they visit. Like, I go to that hotel all the time, mm -hmm. but I just did not know about SPX until, like, right after it happened in 2019, somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite little comic conventions. Um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping to get back there again. Uh, Nayla says, what are conventions like? Well, they've got a bunch of stuff on the schedule, and then there's a bunch of hanging out and just chatting with people. And mm -hmm. I've found... Um, the years that I go to conventions and I skip the stuff on the schedule, I end up too tired to hang out and talk to people as much. It actually really helps me to spend a bunch of time, um, like, in panels and stuff, because that's, like, when I recharge, basically. Um, so, yeah, like, I would go to a panel, sit there, take some notes... Uh, go to another panel, go hang out with people for lunch, that sort of thing. It's good. Yeah. Conventions are definitely very different depending on the size. Uh, like, because, yeah, I normally go to, like, bigger conventions, but I go to a few smaller ones, and it's definitely a completely different experience. Oh, yeah, and it's totally different, too, if you're tabling versus if you're just showing up. Like, have you gone, like, as an artist to, like, try to sell stuff on Art Artist Alley? Uh no, not yet. I've had, like, some friends who are doing stuff, and I've, like, stopped by and, like, helped a little bit, but I haven't, like, been, I've, the one, I've, the one thing where I've done, like, behind-the-scenes stuff is I volunteered at a small anime convention last, mm -hmm. uh, last winter. Yeah, because, um... It would, it would be, I was supposed, uh, like, this, it would be this coming week, I would probably be in Austin volunteering there again if it weren't for her stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's the sort of thing, like, um, I used to sell t-shirts and try to promote my webcomic that way, and it was one of those things where it's like, by the end, we could break even every time, but, like, it was never going to make money, but, like, having to be chained to a table the whole weekend is so much more exhausting than being able to just wander around, you know? Mm -hmm. Have I been to a Minecon? Yeah, I've been to several Minecons. I've been to Anaheim. I've been to Las Vegas. Um, been to I some really of the wish online I could ones. I really gone to Minecons. Like, they were in places I could travel to, but since it was like during the like during like the school year, like on a like a weekend where it would be, I would have school right before and right after. It wouldn't be during a break. I just wouldn't be able to go. Yeah, and that that's one of the big things. Like that was holding me back about having a day job is it's like, okay, if I've got 10 to 15 days off a year, but I need to spend some of them on family commitments and stuff. It's like, okay, how much is left for actually traveling? Or like every time I went to a convention, it'd be like, okay, fly in late Friday, fly out late Sunday. It's just too stressful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then, yeah, the one uh, convention I traveled to that was during like school time ended up like basically it was it was like a reward for getting good grades it was a pack south 2016 mm -hmm. and yeah i have so many stories about that but yeah what ended up happening actually that was like a year we had like a huge blizzard so like i had like three weeks where we didn't have school before it anyways <laughs> um okay it looks like you were already moving on to the next person hold up what's up yeah i've just sort of like outlining it i haven't done thing yet okay but, uh, i'm looking at Next person would be Beef. Okay. Let me go ahead and post the, the existing one here. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Here's Tinfoil Chef. Yeah, Pack South was the first, like, gaming convention I went to. I had... I think the other conventions I'd gone to before I went to BronyCon was, like, the only other one I'd gone to before. Um, unless you count U-Cube, which... What, what is U-Cube? Why would I count it or not? Okay. Did you... Do you remember the Minorama scam? Yeah, I remember the Minorama scam. U-Cube? So, I was one of the people who was... My family, me and my mom were scammed by that. So oh. YouTube was the thing that a bunch of YouTubers going to it organized, like 
in like three days for the people going to it. Nice. So yeah, that was wild. That was just like bizarre. Yeah, I bet. Um. Mm -hmm. okay. And yeah, it's upstairs in my room. If I, I would go maybe go grab it. But I have a a foam sword signed by a ton of like. 2014 popular Minecraft YouTubers from that. Mm -hmm. And there's still photos on my Instagram of me when I was like, yeah, I was 13, I think. Yeah, I was 13 with a bunch of YouTubers. It's crazy how long the memory of social media has gotten because, you know, when I was younger, that was the sort of stuff like you might have stuff from the last two or three years, but people almost never had stuff from seven or eight years ago like but now it's like people have had facebook since 2005 yeah, uh, i'm one of those people who like never reset my social media stuff like of course i've like archived and deleted a lot of stuff but mm -hmm. my instagram was like my first social media account i have and i still have a ton of old stuff on there just like as like to archive it basically and mm -hmm. show it because like most of what i deleted was like me re me being a dumb kid and reposting art without permission or credit. Uh-huh. But pretty much everything else is still up there. Because my, uh, my account, the reason I have so many followers on Instagram still, the reason I like, the only reason I have like a thousand followers still mm -hmm. on Instagram is uh, because I was a My Little Pony fan account. <laughs> and I'm just still using the same account. Gotcha. Okay, so so vintage beef. He's got a beard. I'm seeing. Yeah. He's got like a little fluffy beard. It's it's not like quite as big as the TFC beard. No. I always draw him. I don't know why. Like ever like for ages, I've just drawn him with like slightly like puffy curly hair. Uh huh. Like not like super curly, but. Like this isn't, but like more not not curly but more rounded hair I guess mm -hmm. compared to spiky like I do for a lot of others. Mm -hmm. oh, tried to scrubby zoom there. <laughs> no, no problem. No, I was commenting out myself. It's fine. Via uh. Beef has his apron. Uh huh. So it goes like this. Yeah, I've shared this with you before, but uh, mm -hmm. the first ever cosplay I did was when I was 12 years old, which is just crazy. Yeah. Uh, I dressed up as Vintage Beef for Halloween. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so the apron's got little ties on the side here. because I've, I've done like many like cosplays over the years like i think another one i've done was for Purim. Mm -hmm. one year i dressed up as aurelian and we had like our our like Purim puppet show and i was explaining to everyone no little red riding hood of a minecraft youtuber mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny but and she's and then there's like a little bit of like Flatters or stains on the here. It's random shapes, basically. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's pretty simple. I'm wondering if I still have that like apron. Cause I just like lathered the red paint on that thing. <laughs> it was overdone. Well, I mean that's the way to do it. Okay. Oh man, this is I keep thinking like oh man, somebody's going to feel like I'm trying to like make fun of them by drawing them so badly. And then I get to the next person and then they all come out equally badly. So I'm like, well, no one's going to feel like I'm making fun of them in particular. This beef one would have worked well, but I I drew 
since I can't erase with the pen I'm using, like the apron just looks abysmal. Alright, so there's two hermits left to draw. Okay. Who have we got left? Uh, we've got Jevin and Ren. So I'm going to do this before odd is Jevin, even is Ren. Sounds good to me. Three, so we go with Jevin first. So yeah. Jevin is definitely like one of the more it's very simple, but still very interesting designs because mm -hmm. he's a slime, so you can do a lot with that. Whoops. Okay. Come on. Let me move you, please. Make sure it's the right size. Thank you. Next up is Ijevin. To draw, so like, we need to figure this out, the shape of that. Okay, so Jevin's got that hoodie there. One second, I think there's a cat trying to get into the room. Uh oh. Calling at the door. That's fine, I need to catch up anyway. Uh, oh, and I forgot to post my Jevin link. Or not Jevin, my... What do you call it, Link? There we go. Welcome to Cat, but maybe we we'll walked away. I don't know. Okay. But there yeah. we go. So, howdy, Vital. Okay, I'm posting my the a picture of my beef attempt here. Jonathan Bark says, what about Cub, Mumble, Corral, Sex, Beast, Stress, and others? Well, we did Stress earlier today. We did all the rest of those that you asked about uh during Thanksgiving break. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, I can open up the other one very quickly. This is the one from last stream. Mm-hmm. So, with Jevin. Yeah, I'm just like... Sometimes I just do the clothing details as I'm drawing instead of after. It's just sometimes it just happens that way. Uh huh. I think it's such as good because like I have the sleeves go a bit long, where you can still like see his fingers and stuff, but mm -hmm. longer than the others. Now Jevin actually doesn't have any peoples. It's just the eyes. And give a little, little like tucked there. And then, interesting because like it has like a slime block mm -hmm. inside still. The way like slimes are. So you have like that. Mm -hmm. And then, have, like that. And there's like a little hoodie strings. And pants there, and then also has the pocket for a hoodie. Okay, wait. Let's talk about the face real quick. So, so you do like a little bit of tuft of hair there in a, in a weird jelly way. That's not in the original skin, though. Is that like something you came up with, or is that something in the broader fan community, or like? I started doing it on my own, mm -hmm. but I've seen people, other people do it, like, before me as well. So it's just sort of, like, I think it's just a general thing with drawing, like, slime characters mm -hmm. in, like, the Minecraft community. Because I see it with other characters as well. Just to make it so they aren't just, like, a solid square. Yeah, that makes sense. I may have made mine a solid square, and I'm regretting it. Actually, let me bring up another slime I've drawn recently here. Uh, Pizza Hut. I did you like this? I didn't give him like, the tough, but since he was moving, I made the like slime sort of move out. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's an interesting way to convey the motion there, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's another example of my 
piece of Grian here. Uh -huh. And I have pets here. And the other one's a Kara. This is a Minecraft Championships fan art. Gotcha. I have heard of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to post my... All we have left now is Ren. Okay. Ren Diggity Dog. Next up oh, is Ren. It was like two weeks ago. I saw like a, re a reference to Ren in like a completely random place. Like it was in the Blazeball Discord. Wait, is that a Minecraft Discord or is that no? Like... It has nothing to do with Minecraft. Blazeball is a weird sort of like it's called like a cultural event. It's a sort of game thing. It's complicated. Okay. I've only recently got into it. I don't fully understand it. It's a weird fantasy baseball simulation thing uh-huh but yeah there's a character with the first name named ren and like he scored something and someone was like ren diggity dog and the discord and i was like uh and then someone else who like i've never talked to these people was like is that a hermitcraft reference and then like there were five people in this discord was like "Ooh." it was it was funny running into hermitcraft fans into like in like a weird like completely unrelated corner of the internet, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, uh, real quick, folks, I posted my iJevin Twitter uh, or picture on Twitter, but also Variant Tips 100 who says, I love your art of Eva Kitty. So thank, thank you very you. much, Variant, for supporting the stream. Let's see, we were at seven. So then that's going to be a full abacus, basically, and five face camera expansions I got to do real quick. While oh you know what I should have done I should have worn my Bob Ross wig since this is an art stream. Okay, so here we go. Time to say howdy y'all. Crow Hills here, expanding as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. Do 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 do. And then for our second one, Crow Hills. Do 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 do. The wig does not fit over the headphones, but I can't hear Aviva if I take the headphones off. So. We've got three more of these. Thanks to Variant, we got to parse this real quick. Expand, do, 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 do. Um, I don't know. There's no mistakes. There's only happy expansion dance. <laughs> I don't. Know. And finally, y'all have seen that money go straight to my head. But now, like Jacob Marley, that wig has fallen off. And these uh, chains I forged in life are about to begin pulling me down to the deep below. Enter the chost. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and bring this to 90% geopacity where I belong. I'm also going to move this over here. People aren't probably going to need to see your layers too much, so... No, it's... Okay. There we go. So thank you very much, uh, Variant. Somebody says, I just noticed Joe's cam. How could you miss it? It's loud. Okay. So that does put us 13 away from the next face camera expansion. Okay. Uh, buh, 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 buh. So you've already got an entire body in place, and I have a blank sheet so far. So... <laughs> Tell, tell me about what makes Rendog's character Rendog when you're drawing it. Yeah, well, Ren a lot is, well, again, it's mostly hair and outfit. Uh -huh. With Ren, sometimes, like, I don't do this for, like, the sort of, like, badly John Hermit craft stuff, but, like, sometimes my owner, I give him, like, the dog ears and the paws and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and sometimes, like, a tail. Mm -hmm. But for mostly, it's, like, he is, like, really, I guess, the for him, the iconic thing is like the hairstyle, facial hair, and then the sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And God, Ren's skin is a entire mess right now. He just keeps adding layers and layers of more like things that have happened throughout the season onto it, and just like not. It... Yeah. <laughs> it's just like the glasses are like blue. His clothes are still ripped from like the first thing. <laughs> If it makes you feel better, he's only doing it specifically to annoy you. No, that's not no, true. No, I, I think it's just very funny. But it, it's just ridiculous how, like, just how many different layers of stuff. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that's rent. Let me do this. First, yours are a bit too. There we go. He has his sunglasses after, but yeah, his hair is a bit complicated here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Says has like a little sort of it's slicked back, but has like sort of like a tuft. Uh, every time I, time I think about like oh, Ren, like drawing Ren's hair and stuff, I think about the one live stream, like the one stream day, or I don't know how it started, but it was like some joke about shaving Ren, and <laughs> what? Yeah, it was like it was. This is back in season six. I think. Not sure exactly when. It was before the 1.14 update. But there was some joke about shaving Ren on, like, Cub and Scar segments. And then my friend Ori made a skin of him that was, like, bald as a joke. And then, like, Cub and Scar peer pressured him into putting it on uh -huh. during his segment. But what we didn't notice is that, like, the tuft of hair that's on the second layer didn't actually get deleted, so it was just ridiculous. I think the skin's still in Ren's skin history if you want to see it. It's very funny. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't think VODs from that stream exist anymore, but that was, like, one... I think definitely that weekend was, like, my favorite Hermitcraft stream weekend. So, I know, one thing I noticed is that um, the the glasses are are not uh, opaque. Yeah, because normally I would like fill them in since mm. they're like black when I'm doing black and white, but since they're blue currently, I'm not doing that. Gotcha. No, that makes sense. So yeah, now his like he has like. Currently, his hair is like mycelium. It's I think that's gonna be continually added. To, it's ridiculous. So he doesn't mm -hmm. have any shoes on currently. So mm -hmm. you can actually add like vague toes. Vague toes. Okay. Which I don't like ever properly draw feet when I'm doing barefoot characters ever. I just like add lines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like ripped up. The this watch is like ripped up. So everything is just like torn to shreds. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. <laughs> His belt is still fine though. Well, you know, you gotta keep your pants up, so it's a family friendly. And then one of his suspenders is still. And then the other is just kind of dangling there. <laughs> He's missing part of his shirt over here. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And then there's like part. I was gonna like, say I can actually hold it up now, and people can see my progress. Like sort of rings around like his feet thing. I don't know what it. I think it's supposed to be like 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 an ankle bracelet, it. like surfer stuff. No, it's like part of the pants got ripped, but like the bottom of it's still there. It doesn't make sense. I think he just didn't remove that that part of the pants on that layer. So I just don't draw that part. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. No, this is looking great. In fact, actually, I think this is my best one today. <laughs> like, I'm actually super excited about this one. <laughs> there we go. I think that is everyone. So then the, um, you know, we had talked about... Um, after we got done with all the static poses with the hermits, we were going to talk maybe a little bit about dynamic poses. Is there anything that you wanted to um, do in particular with that? Or hmm. I'm thinking like because we got another forty minutes, so yeah, we don't I'm have we don't have all like... the time in the world, but we do have some time. I'm going to actually this is my sort of go to. I'm figuring out what to draw. Is I bring up the hermit craft craft website and look at the like new look at all the recent videos and see if i remember like a specific moment i want to draw from them mm -hmm. but 
I'm gonna do that, and also, if chat has any suggestions of moments, I guess, from, like, the last two weeks. Or maybe a bit, like, last month, even. I think it'd be interesting. Next. Is I am not actually fully up to date. <laughs> Aviva. Next, Aviva is gonna be showing us how to draw the hermits in more dynamic poses. Where, uh... Now that the character basics, now that the character basics are behind us. I see the suggestion of Tango herding rabbits in a stream for Scar's Rabbit Farm. I did not see that stream, but the idea of Tango herding rabbits sounds very funny, so I want to do that one. Sounds good to me. And we can also then talk about drawing some of the animals or whatever in Minecraft as well, because the rabbits. Like, do you draw it the same way you would a normal rabbit, or do you minecraft size it? minecraft of eight? Honestly, it depends on the drawing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then also I see a comment of Tango showing his bunny slippers. So we'll put, also have Tango in bunny slippers here. Yeah. Okay, so let me pull up. I'm going to link my tweet with my uh, Ren the Dog drawing. Okay. So. Yeah, often figuring out poses, I do, mm -hmm. for like a finish drawing, I'll do a sketch first, but for these I still, I tend to just do like basic stuff. I just don't really do a full sketch, I just do like a lot of re redoing stuff and mm -hmm. such. So yeah, for this I'm thinking of, let me like show sort of the pose and like a stick figure thing of what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I'm thinking of sort of body like arch right like the head back is sort of just like kind of trying to shoo the rabbits mm -hmm. like that's not exactly a thing i'm trying to do with that that pose but i end up workshopping poses a lot as i'm doing them mm -hmm. well and, th and that's something to note too is it, for folks who are not used to drawing as much like not everything starts out like fully realized you gotta kind of mess around with different ways to do the pose or like imagining where the point of view is, where the quote unquote camera is, if you will. Yeah, I'm gonna make this canvas bigger as well. This is kind of small and I just wanna keep the sure, size sure. move around there. All right, there we go. So yeah, I, I have like the idea of like, I want, cause when I like figuring out a drawing and I have the idea from that, I have a sort of like vague idea of certain elements, but I don't have the full composition ever. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, for example, I can bring up this other drawing or I can explain, I had the idea of them, like, falling, and I sort of figured out Pete first. And then I sort of, like, realized I want to have them all linking hands, so I figured out the pose for the next one. It's like, okay, it would make sense if this part was there and then this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it doesn't fully work out, but... I knew I wanted them, like, all laid out in a line and such. And then I had the idea of, like, them falling and linking hands and just figuring it out as I go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for this, I think, yeah, I'm actually going to actually do the arm first because, like, that's sort of the leading of the motion here. Hmm. I'm just trying to, and I'm looking at my own hands here. I often like look at my, basically use yourself as a reference, honestly, often. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at my hands like, how would this pose work? So it would be like thumb and like this, and then, no, not like that, but they, thumb would be in just to make sure like, like that and that. Nah. Ah, hands are the worst part. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing about like, a concept of herding rabbits, you also have the scale issue that the rabbits are going to be, like, way low in on the ground, you know? Where So so the, the characters are, like, two meters high, and rabbits are, like, 
a decimeter or something. I don't know, maybe two. Hmm. Maybe let's do it like that. No, that doesn't look look right either. Hmm. So I'm gonna just when I get stuck on that, I just stop with that for now. Like I have like a circle or something in place, or just leave it blank, mm -hmm. and then come back to that later. Would it be maybe, um, just in the interest of time, like the thing, one thing that's jumping out at me is this is so highly, um, situational. Although admittedly now, as I'm saying that out loud, that's a lot of what you do is you draw these incredibly specific situations. Here's Tango shooing a bunch of rabbits, but like for, for people learning to draw, Drawing people okay. shooing rabbits is probably not something that's going to come up super commonly. Like, I would may there might be more like pose. You have, you have a point there. <laughs> like, just I'm not trying to shut this down. I'm just saying, hear me out. Like, in your opinion, like maybe something like here we're gonna we're gonna draw two hermits jumping in the air and high fiving each other, or something. Yes. Would that's that actually? I think that would be better for me because I'm realizing this is a very complicated thing to do. So let me. Uh... Yeah, like realistically, as from my cartooning experience, the only way to draw this and have the composition make sense would be to have like the rabbits in the foreground and the like the point of view super low looking up. But like that's so atypical for how you would normally draw hermits because they're not we're not normally interacting with tiny things on the ground. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if we're just trying to encourage folks to start drawing, let's maybe do something simpler. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're, we want to stay with, since you're drawing Tango, how about do Tango, Impulse, and ZF doing like a three-way high five? Sure. That seems appropriate. So yeah, for that, basically figure out, like, I usually either sometimes start with like head or body. So you have... Mm -hmm. The body motion is like being, you're supposed to start with the body. Sometimes I start with the head. I, that's just sort of a quirk of what how I draw. Mm -hmm. You're definitely supposed to like figure out the positioning of the body first. And often I'll like have, so this would be the point where their hands meet. So okay. I'm going to have like figuring out the distance. Mm hmm. gonna try and actually have the body first and then i'm gonna so three-way high five is already more complicated so is one of them gonna be behind the high five yeah we'll start i'm just placing them but i'm mm -hmm. gonna do the first two first so this will be tango here zf mm -hmm. here and impulse here mm -hmm. so i'll start with I'm going to definitely be doing a lot of moving characters around. This is something for like poses because when you're doing it traditional, mm -hmm. you I tend to do like sketching out, figuring out, and like a lot, a lot of erasing. Mm -hmm. Arm length there erase this because lines are getting messy this is mm -hmm. often why i do like a more transparent sketch first mm -hmm. but when i'm doing like quicker stuff oh. i'm gonna have like this arm going back to like show like action and motion here i'm not gonna do the hand yet I'm just mm -hmm. figuring this out <laughs> yeah honestly a lot of doing poses Mm -hmm. is knowing like the thing is the one thing when people are learning to draw especially kids who like like cartoons is like i don't want to learn how to draw realistic i like i hate being forced to do this but it sucks but honestly you need to learn how to do that in order to then stylize it it's something you sort of need to know the basics mm -hmm. before you can go and while cartoons seem more simple than realism Cartoons are all based off subversion of realism. Mm -hmm. So you need to know the basics before the rules before you break them. 
Yeah, I mean, I personally took two semesters of life drawing in college, as well as a generic drawing class where we would just, you know, draw other things. But yeah, it's kind of one of those things that you, you gotta, it, that's one of the best reasons, in my opinion, to go to a school that has a broad amount of subject matter is because you can be an engineer or a historian or whatever and still be like, okay, I'm going to take a few semesters where they're going to bring in models for us to draw and, and you can get that real world practical experience. Um, Cause that, that's kind of hard to do when you're younger in the same way. Mm -hmm. And there are also just plenty of places that offer like just life drawing classes as well if it's something you just want to do on your own time and such. Mm -hmm. well, I went to like a small school in high school, so I actually went to like a there's sort of like an arts studio place that did art classes and specifically had had it for like a like clothed model drawing for teenagers and such. I'm also assuming that you're not from a particularly like rural area. No, I I'm like. I'm in the D.C. suburbs. Yeah, so, like, in the there are places in Tennessee where that might not be as available to folks. But, yeah, no, that is a good point, because I wouldn't have thought of that. All right. So, and now it has, like, the basic motion of the two arms that are meeting here. Mm -hmm. Going to do the rest. So, I think this arm's going to be going behind. Mm-hmm gonna draw the motion of it out even though it's not gonna be seen just to like show how mm -hmm. it connects here so it gets foreshortening there like have no it doesn't make sense okay it goes like that and then i'll do the hand later <laughs> but yeah and then for this arm I have the idea of the hand I want it to be like that, sort of mm -hmm. curled in. You can do the legs here. This character pose, sort of like jumping, falling, sort of. Mm -hmm. I haven't established what space they're in exactly, so. Yeah, definitely a trap I fall into a lot is not thinking about the background before drawing. Mm hmm. This is where I'm at so far for anybody who's watching along at home. It, since I can't drag things around, I've just done a second sketch that kind of matches uh, Aviva's. Because the first one was all in the wrong place. Also, Ride Escape says Merry Christmas, Joe. Thank you, Ride Escape. You too. Uh... going to have figure out the legs for this. I think I might want to make this body more dynamic. Yeah, again, poses are a lot more difficult than figuring out the just like the basic thing because you have to refine, you have to go back and edit and refine over and over again. Mm-hmm. Unless you have a specific pose you're already referencing from, which you still do that sometimes, but when you're making them up. There we go. I still haven't figured out how you're going to get the third person into this. Maybe a so. I have, usually start with the arm when I'm like having characters like connect here. We'll have it definitely has like a bit of perspective here. And like figure out the head last. Like this is something why you don't all where you start like the head first, because you have to figure it out in relation to the body. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's interacting with other characters. Oh. go yeah my process for this kind of stuff is a lot less straightforward than what we've been doing before i 
I'm almost keeping up. <laughs> There we go. You see in the back the these that have smaller because like perspective going back and he's reaching. Oh, and I yeah, I see how you got the leg in there, like really subtly and then kicking back too. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, this is supposed to be a more simple one. I, I I don't go simple with poses often. No, that's okay. <laughs> and that's my bad for not like, um, like I, what I should have done was I should have straight up been like, okay, let's, I'll brainstorm five of these and talk to Aviva before the stream rather than just randomly in the middle of the stream. I don't know what's good. That's, this is only uh, our. I mean, even brainstorming before, I'd probably go a bit too overboard. <laughs> Well, either way, I do appreciate your patience with me on this stuff because, like, this is my first, uh, or this is only uh, our second, like, guest drawing stream that we've done. Even though I used to do a lot of my own drawing streams back in the day, um, like, they were always kind of improvisational, but, like, I had a script. I was, I was usually drawing my own comics. So it's like, okay, I know roughly what I'm doing all the time. They're not, I'm not used to th being this fast and loose, so... I'm learning what I need to prepare in advance for these things. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We have the weird bands on Tango's like outfit. Mm -hmm. Pockets and pants. Okay. I'm gonna go for impulse. My impulse looks way happier than my tango. My tango looks like he might be trying to grab somebody's arm. Uh, but impulse is happy. Yeah. I'm giving him like a slight worried expression like this isn't going to end well. Because <laughs> they are kind of just falling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if Super Chat's not available in your region... Um... My PayPal is paypal.me slash joehills. Here that is. And I should get an alert. Sometimes international ones take a few minutes uh, to process. But thank you. Okay. I think currently Impulse has like an eye on his shirt. Yeah, I think so too. Go. Yeah. And has a... The eyebrows trying to make it exact, like the, the just the subtle difference in eyebrows, like makes the emotion just diff completely different. Also, oh. I did not do his pants correctly here. Absolutely, oh, shoes are right there. Need to give him. What is what's different about Impulse's pants again? Does he have he's shorts? Cargo. Yeah, he's got cargo cargo pants with like big pockets. Cargo pants or cargo shorts? Cargo shorts. Yeah. Okay. It would be funny is the uh, those like those pants that like unzip the bottom of the legs. <laughs> oh, the breakaway or no, not breakaway, but yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about, like for like backpacking and camping and stuff. Mm -hmm. I knew kids in like middle school who just wore those because they thought they were cool, like just to school. <laughs> nice. Okay. And now we've got much less like space visually to convey our third character here. So what details are the most important to make sure uh, we really sell who this is? Well, for ZF, it's the hair. Mm -hmm. so his, his hair is very like, I at least draw it very differently from any of the other hermits. Mm -hmm. It's just the little floof that again, that sort of came from uh, Maxilla's drawing of ZF. Mm -hmm. Drawings of ZF that I do, that I got that from. And 
gonna, yeah, just to, just gonna add a little bit. Just to sort of sell that. Awesome. Oh, you even have Tango's other arm. I completely forgot to draw Tango's other arm. <laughs> okay. Wow, yours looks awesome. Mine looks passable. It wouldn't look this good if I tried to do this on my own, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, Like, this is... Okay, I, I see you also have some extra details on Impulse's shoes that I missed. So, I could probably add. She like didn't do the shoes probably on ZF or Tango, so there. Yeah. <laughs> but and then, pow. And seeing someone saying like, "Why does this Tango look like he does a headband?" Tango like. It isn't clear if his skin's like it has like a weird stripe, so I interpret it as a headband, and a lot of other people do. But the hair on his skin is just odd. I've seen people call it macaroni and cheese hair mm -hmm. for both uh, Tango and ZF for their skins. It's funny that like the hair on ZF's skin is shaded, while the entire rest of it's just like entirely flat. <laughs> You know, I'm trying to think if there's, like, a New Year's thing, like, like, if we were going to make a Happy New Year's and, like, have, like, people, like, raising champagne flutes or something. Although champagne flutes may be too fiddly. Um, I don't know. Or what what else do people do for, for New Year's to, to celebrate? Is there something visually pose-wise that you could think of? no idea i've been to one new year's party and it was like an early one that was like a neighbor's at like 8 p.m okay and the only thing i remember is they had this like really good like peppermint chocolate that i don't know the name of what the like snack was called and i really liked it and i wish i could have find out what it was <laughs> was it a york peppermint patty have you had those before no like, I, I know what those are it was it was okay. different it was like crunchy it was it was homemade so gotcha Aviva taught us to draw a three-way high five. Let me let me post this. Uh, because like I was thinking, like maybe what we do is we do something where it's like we teach the pose, and you say draw your favorite hermit. Like we we show the pose, and and, and then let people fill in their own details of like a hermit raising a champagne glass, saying Happy New Year or something, or like mm -hmm. this is the sort of thing we should have brainstormed in advance. Uh, that's <laughs> That's on me. Um, ZF. Tango. And Impulse. Okay. So I will get that link to post for y'all. In just a second, or I'll share that with the chat just in a second. Um, or is there a traditional Minecraft thing too? Um, I always like set off fireworks with friends in Minecraft. Look, the past I think five years, every New Year's I've just played Minecraft. <laughs> well, that's what I'm doing this New Year's. <laughs> um, somebody says confetti poppers. I don't think we have those in America. That sounds. I think that's a UK thing. What? No, those are a thing. Are they? Yeah, like, it's at least, like, a stereotypical thing. Like, I've seen cartoons. I've never had I've, one. I've but... seen them in cartoons. I've, I've never known anybody who had them at their parties. Like, I've seen real fireworks at New Year's, but I haven't seen confetti poppers. But I I've don't had know. confetti poppers at, like, people's birthday parties. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I'm curious to see people's... Uh, three-way high five drawings in response to this um I'm, I'm hoping some of the talented illustrators uh posted along somebody says joe got censored well, what did i get censored for what yeah i'm thinking about like what are these verses we draw the confetti popper thing first so the like 
one of these things. Uh, I really like the like party emoji. It's called like Tada. I really like this emoji. I use it a lot. <laughs> okay. Just thinking of how this works, and then the the string would be pulled. So hand would be. You can actually do another layer here. So hand would be like gripping it here. Sort of figuring this out with drawing, and then the other hand would be here. Like I've got to say, like just the um the speed at which you can draw realistic ribbon that conveys what it needs to be, like, you know, seriously, <laughs> practice drawing if you want to get this good. Like this is really impressive. Okay. So so the idea is it's got two hands. One's holding the the this cone the other one's pulling the string mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. the idea okay yep i'm just sort of figuring out the anatomy of the arm here so like where it would bend and sort of dang it and i'm just getting ink all over my tank top <laughs> it's fine it'll chroma out <laughs> then oh, i want it so this arm is like folding back, and then this arm mostly straight. Yeah, that works there. I don't know which way the hands are facing exactly, but. Uh. Yeah. Core concept. Mm -hmm. Then move all this down, actually. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yep. Ah, there we go. Let's see, if I was holding that, my fingers would be coming up from underneath it. Like that, and then like that, and then I sort of erase, and you can figure it out from the basic thing, even though it doesn't like show the exact. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna have like a little frayed thing to show disconnected there, and just it. And more. It's so. I was like, oh, you know, I could. If, if we're talking about drawing whatever hermit you like in this pose, I was like, oh, I should draw myself. Maybe I should figure out what my glasses look like. If only I had, like, a reference. And I'm like, oh, my web camera is half this monitor over here. <laughs> yep. Always good to use yourself as a reference. Exactly. Like, often, even if I'm not looking in a mirror, I'm trying to draw out a specific expression, I'll be making that expression. Mm -hmm. Just, like, out of habit. Yeah, Just, thank like, you. trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And not all hermits have ears or mm -hmm. ears like this, but hmm. trying to think of there's two hermits that come to mind for this for making just like a huge mess mm -hmm. <laughs> of like confetti popper suddenly, and that is Grian and Etho. <laughs> Gotcha. Because it just reminds me of two specific like, instances of like things. Like, uh, I've been talking to people about the old like uh, Team Canada like complete the monument series, mm -hmm. and I remember how like before like you could fly 
with fireworks and they're just added as decorative how Ita would just like whenever they get them in the map Ita would just bug beef and paws with them like all the time nice <laughs> I was just thinking about that with the party popper yeah I'm gonna make this Etho I'm actually gonna lock this layer and add on so I can have like the base layer of it. Actually, making a copy is better so I can like erase stuff properly. There we go. We've got like a little mischievous lint. My hair has gotten way too long. I'm like trying to figure out how to draw it remotely realistically and not just have it going down my back. But, which it doesn't quite go down my back at this point. It's like to my shoulder blades. But Oh well. <laughs> I've been trying to grow my hair out for so long and it's like not getting any longer than this. Just don't cut it. That's what I did. Well, that's what I did for a while and it just like it keeps like getting split ends and breaking off so i do have to trim it every once in a while because gotcha if i do want it to get longer but it's very very slow because i cut it short in it was at the end of middle school mm -hmm. there's this just like there's, there's a ridiculous photo of me and my friend at a follow boy concert and like this is like the shortest i've had my hair and it was just like Soup, it gets super curly when it's short, so it's just like a whole mess everywhere. I had like, I had dental surgery like two days before. <laughs> yeah. It's on my Instagram still. It's like, you can go find that on there. It's just this ridiculous photo of us. And that, that concert was so bizarre. It was a joint Wiz Khalifa Fall Out Boy concert. Okay. It was like a, me and my friend, I was an eighth grader and she was a sixth grader. <laughs> We were there for Fall Out Boy, mm -hmm. and Wiz Khalifa was performing, and they had, instead of putting beach balls into the crowd, like, they had inflatable blunts. <laughs> instead of, like, beach balls, they'd be, like, pulling into the crowd. It was just a bizarre experience. And that was actually my first concert, other than, like, the Wiggles, which I went to when I was little. <laughs> Yeah, it was, that was my first proper concert. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember. I was like, Wiz Khalifa, that name sounds so familiar. Oh, uh, like. The only song of theirs I, like, properly remember is, like, Black and Yellow. Okay, so he's not the person I'm thinking of. I thought. Okay, anyway. Um... Definitely not a kid friendly band. Gotcha. So it's the... just really yeah. awkward. <laughs> Because we were just there with, like, basically a bunch of stoners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were just there to see Fall Out Boy. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying to think. So I've got a drawing of myself with the with the party popper. And I'm trying to, like, should it say... A part of me was like, I should write Happy New Year on it. And then I was like... I get... Well, well maybe. Hmm. It seems early just to post a New Year's card, but... Ooh, what is that? What were those lines? I'm doodling so like sometimes when I like wanna like sort of accentuate the expression, I was like sort of like doodling the ideas. I've been trying to like make like sort of lines make it like feel mischievous. Mm -hmm. Just trying to figure that out. There isn't like because sometimes there's like there's like these would be like excited or shouting. This would be like angry, but there isn't like something specific for like mischievous. So I was trying to think of something. No, oh, that's cool. So you... that. We we've got like eight minutes left, so that's not necessarily long enough to start a whole new sketch. So feel free to just mess around with just talk about like little lines and what they can mean. That that would be cool. Yeah, because like often like lines coming off the character, I forget exactly what they're called. Because mm -hmm. like sometimes it's like motion lines where actually I can, I think adding this in the background or like adding motion lines here would really like accentuate that there's like a huge blast like yeah. making like noise and things are going everywhere yeah and 
then also like sort of like conveys emotion like if you have a character that's like it's like a drop on their face it's like sad like a lot of this comes from anime mm -hmm. and such but it's like well and manga as well mm -hmm. and it just works really well to convey emotion because while yeah you can convey emotion specifically from like the character's face and such mm -hmm. it like when you want to I guess accentuate it and make it a bigger thing. Because it like trying to like I'm just trying to think of what would be like a mischievous because there isn't like a specific thing for that. That would be more like hmm, like glaring at you kind of thing, a little flash like that. Would a party popper like this traditionally be, um, like, striped or something like that? Yes, actually. They have, like, the diagonal stripe. That's a good idea. Because, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that mine reads as such. Mm -hmm. Let me shade in the inside there a bit. If I want to. Clean up the hand. Finger's actually going the right way here. Yeah. Yeah, tell me what it's action lines is what it's called. Good way of putting it. Tommy Voice says uh action lines help draw and guide the viewer's attention. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and post my drawing. I think I've got basically yeah. What I need here. Does anybody have any, uh, before we close out, we got a few minutes left. Anybody have any questions for Aviva? Or anyone have any particular ideas for what they would like to see us draw in the future? Because, um, Aviva, it's been uh, a joy having you on the show twice, and I would love to do this again sometime in the new year. Me too. Dropping this down so it's ready to post. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh... And then, yeah, we'll give everybody a, a few seconds to post their questions or concerns. Um, add another tweet. Whoops, that's not it. Yeah, I ended up just adding like a little, like, hee hee hee. A little laugh instead of lines. So I feel like that conveys this better. Sometimes it's adding a little dialogue. Oh, the hee 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 hee. It's nice because, yeah, it works almost just. It conveys it even without the the literal verbal. Like, that's good mm -hmm. lettering. Um, okay, one piece of or one question was, any tips on how to draw hands? I don't think that, that we're probably we're probably not going to jump into a hand drawing stream first, because I'm trying to encourage people to feel comfortable trying things, and yeah. jumping into drawing hands is, like, more advanced. Is that is that a fair read? Yeah. Well, though I will say, honestly, it's just a lot of the same techniques for drawing other stuff. You have to break everything down into its specific shapes. And again, you need to learn the realism, how it works realistically before simplifying it. If you jump into simplifying it, you're not going to know the rules of, of like, what rules you're subverting. Sorry, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm trying to post this tweet um let's see uh elkius suggested coloring tips as a as a stream idea that would be good because like doing doing maybe one or two more with just the line art and then being like okay now we're gonna color some of the stuff because does mm -hmm. the badly drawn hermit stuff get colored i mean that other thing you showed with the um with false and green and pete um, that was colored. So you obviously do color. Yeah, I, I, I do colors to the Valley John Hermit stuff sometimes. Sometimes I fully color it. I rarely shade it. Sometimes I fully color it. Sometimes I do just like a few colors. It, it just sort of just what I'm feeling. Basically. Yeah, like, um, okay, yeah, so. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Thank you, Elkius. Um, yeah, coloring is a lot of fun. Okay. 
Well, I think that uh, we're going to go ahead and close this out then. Thank you again to Aviva. I'm going to go ahead and post a link to that Badly Drawn Hermit's Twitter account where you can find all of Aviva's hermit, or Badly Drawn Hermit work. Do you do you have a place that you post your... Do, do you do non-quote-unquote Badly Drawn Hermit stuff that you post somewhere? I mean, pretty, yeah, just on my main Twitter, I have stuff... Um... Mm-hmm. On my, I have a Tumblr blog. It's just avivakitty.tumblr.com that I reblog all my art from my other blogs that I'm the most proud of. To that, so if you want to go specifically for to look at my art, that's where to go. Okay, I'm posting that now. Yeah, I see. Oh, lots of cool stuff on here, in various styles. So yeah, y'all can get some interesting ideas from that. Okay. Well, thank you again, Aviva, for turning it out. Thank you to everyone who showed up and drew along. Thank you for posting your pictures on Twitter. Thank you again to everyone who tipped as well, uh, because I would love to be able to keep hiring guests to do fun events like this. And uh, also, it helps me offset the cost of moderation. So thanks, Tommy Boy, for moderating this afternoon. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. And I'm Bye. Re- Bye. I'm realizing I forgot to tell or do a raid. Um you mentioned you like false symmetry. We'll just raid false. Yay. In honor of a Viva Kitty. Oh no, that command doesn't work in YouTube. <laughs> Everything I do is so professional, Aviva. This is you're you're getting to see behind the scenes right now. Granted, so is literally everyone else because um because I'm still streaming until this raid goes through. Okay, and...